Hello, my name is Artur Szymański and I'm Art Director at Sinteract. I hoped this will be a live talk uh, during Dragons, but unfortunately it's not possible. Uh, hopefully the situation will improve soon. Uh, at Sinteract we are developing simulation games. And with this comes uh, our biggest challenge, our need for large environments. Uh, this could mean a landscape that spans over thousands of square kilometers uh, or cities with thousands of unique buildings. Uh, creating those manually by hand sculpting terrain or modeling buildings one by one would need AAA budget and was out of the question. So from the very beginning we knew we will need to approach this procedurally. Uh, we are looking at existing tools uh, like World Machine, like uh, Unreal plugins. Uh, but the problem with uh, such tools is that those are very rarely tailored for exact needs of a project. We are of course considering uh, creating in-house tools by the code team, but that would put additional stress on the code team um, and uh, the entire process of uh, creating the tool um, with going back and forth from the art team to the code is not that streamlined. Uh, what would be perfect is to create tool for the art team by the art team. And this is where Houdini comes in. Houdini is essentially a sandbox for tool creation. Uh, it allows us to, to create a quick draft of a tool, um, test it, and test it in the live environment of a game. Uh, with use of Houdini engine, it can be uh, changed into an uh, engine plugin and tested by level art without even uh, need for uh, any Houdini skills. And after this uh, testing phase, if we decided the tool is promising, it can be further improved. And at the final stage, uh, the code can be introduced to finalize and perfect the tool. And I would like to present two cases of uh, such uh, Houdini use in our projects. Uh, first would be a landscape generator. Uh, <clears throat> the landscape we are creating are not one-to-one -one recreation of existing locations. That would uh, make our uh, job uh, simpler. We could use uh, satellite data, uh, but unfortunately this is not possible. Uh, our game world is scaled down, gamified version of the world. Uh, so what we need from our terrains is first to be believable, that's obvious, uh, but at the same time uh, we need uh, all topographical features to be in exact places that level design needs those. And this is what our first procedure is uh, <coughs> doing. So let's jump into Houdini. And first, a uh, quick UI explanation. Uh, here we have a basic viewport, here a network of our procedure, and in this window we will see parameters of currently selected node. Uh, this procedure may look daunting at first, but it's actually very simple and it uses only uh, stock Houdini nodes, uh, no custom, node, custom nodes whatsoever. Uh, all of those sections uh, created different parts of biomes and uh, how that works uh, I will explain based on mountain biome uh, simply because it's visually most interesting. We start with inputting data. And this is a very simple splat map. Uh, this can be a texture um, imported directly from uh, level design documents. Uh, this can be painted uh, in Unreal level uh, by level artist. And it's uh, simply to uh, mark locations of uh, biomes we will, we will be generating. In this case, uh, we decided that those will be places where mountains will be erected. And we start by modifying this uh, texture and then casting it on the height map. This gives us a very simple shape. At the same time, we're uh, generating and adding different types of noise just to add variety. Then we're masking this noise with our splat map and combine uh, with the uh, generated uh, height map. And this gives us a first glance at uh, general shape of the mountains we will be uh, generating. 
Uh, and then uh, the first uh, interesting node comes. It's erosion node. It simulates erosion and in this scale it creates first mountain ridges and canyons. So the very large structures. Uh, but this makes a huge difference from our uh, noise to something that's uh, that's starting to look more interesting and realistic. Uh, the next step is to uh, resample our uh, landscape. This is uh, basically subdividing underlying grid and allows us to create finer details. Uh, again, we are intr introducing noise, but of a smaller scale and different type. And as well, uh, we will masking this noise. This is adding additional details, uh, clearing mask just to uh, see details better. And again, everything is eroded. Uh, with a smaller grid scale, uh, the er erosion is acting on uh, finer details. We're starting to have structures similar to rivers and valleys. Again, resampling. Uh, it will be done in two stages. And those switches, they're encountered in uh, many different parts of this network, are simply to override uh, some of resamples and erosion. Uh, and the purpose of this <coughs> is to create a simpler preview version of a landscape. This is generated much faster and can be used by level art for debugging and testing purposes. And now we will have again noise that this time is added only to the mountain tops. And it's followed by a final erosion. And this one is in a scale that generates uh, details in a scale of uh, one meter. Uh, something I should mention, uh, this uh, is a terrain um, of 64 square kilometers, eight by eight kilometers. This is standard uh, Unreal terrain size uh, the biggest uh, terrain chunk we can have in Unreal. Uh, but of course, uh, game terrain, game world can consist of many of such chunks that are distributed by uh, world composition system inside Unreal. And this uh, is our mm, final mountain shape. It is quite interesting and believable, and yet it follows our splat map exactly. Uh, one more thing is happening inside erosion nodes. Uh, we've got uh, geometry gener generated, but at the same time, some additional da data is gathered. And we've got inf information about uh, water, debris, sediment, bedrock, uh, all this information can be later extracted and used for creating uh, texture masks, uh, layer, uh, terrain layer masks uh, for creating automatical terrain and textures in Unreal. Uh, those nodes uh, do just that. And this is an example of uh, one of uh, many masks we are extracting. Uh, then we'll jump a little bit further to the point when all our biomes are combined. We've got hills, we've got a flat area that will later be uh, <coughs> changed into um, our uh, city placement. And all this terrain is generated from just a simple couple of simple splat maps. Uh, additionally, uh, from uh, geometry, uh, additional uh, new information can be extracted. Information like ambient occlusion, slopes of different values,
curvature and many other masks that were created uh, inside erosion nodes. Uh, then all this information is uh, processed and extracted in and exported in uh, file formats uh, that are uh, possible to import in uh, Unreal. Uh, but what's uh, even better is to change this entire procedure uh, through Houdini Engine into uh, <coughs> Unreal plugin. And everything I just showed you can be uh, created uh, directly from Unreal without uh, even uh, having to uh, have Houdini installed. Uh, just Houdini Engine is needed for this. Uh, and through the magic of editing, we'll be looking at this, hopefully, uh, in Unreal. Uh, yes, this is our splat map. Some parts are painted, some are important, imported, uh, and now we can have terrain regenerated, and everything you can see right now is generated directly from uh, through our procedure and uh, with use of uh, mater uh, landscape materials in Unreal. All foliage or trees are distributed automatically on a splat maps generated uh, through our procedure. Second case of our Houdini use I would like to present is building generation. Uh, this procedure is entirely based on uh, one node uh, that's heavily modified, heavily custom modified uh, Houdini node uh, that's uh, available for uh, every Houdini user with download of labs nodes pack and it's properly named building generator. It has two inputs. First input is building shape. It's a simply shape extruded to a uh, height that we want the building to have. And I've prepared a couple of different shapes just for testing purposes. Uh, some wild shapes uh, are useful to test a uh, procedure to the limits. Uh, of course, building procedure that works only on uh, simple angles is way easier than something that works in any possible case. The second input uh, are facade modules. Here we have a simple set. Uh, those could be uh, generated in any 3D software. Uh, those could be retopologized re 3D scans. Uh, just Remember not to start uh, creating those in Houdini because this would be a horrible experience. Uh, modeling, modeling that's not procedural is one of the weakness of Houdini. Uh, here we have a couple of ty types of uh, modules, uh, different colors uh, denotes different uh, floors. We've got attic, we've got ground floor and standardized floor. Uh, we've got uh, modules that will be used to <coughs> fit uh, on uh, corners. And uh, with those models, modules, uh, one of the most, impor most important thing is uh, to uh, keep, uh, keep those very precise. Uh, sizing is very important, uh, as well as position of a pivot. And with uh, just two inputs, the shape and the properly named and set up uh, facade elements. This one node building generator creates, set up all those elements together to create a building model in a fraction of time that level art would need uh, to do the same. And of course uh, this is uh, 
first version, this is working progress version, uh, later we'll be adding um, different uh, pattern types, uh, different type of ran randomization. But as a baseline, this is a very nicely working tool. Uh, this can be exported as a FBX, for example. But uh, way more interesting is export this as a point cloud with all points uh, with information about module that goes into this point, orientation and size. And this can be used in Unreal to recreate this model from instances. So we can have this created in very optimized way. Uh, then with the same input, shape as an input, uh, we can create additional uh, details that won't be instanced, but created as unique meshes. In this case, the outer part of the rooftop, just a couple of nodes, and we have for every possible shape, quickly created roof uh, that can be very quickly procedurally textured. And here we have everything combined. Again, procedural procedure works ex extremely fast. And uh, what is especially useful is uh, to use as an input data, not uh, shapes customly created. Uh, of course, this could be the case, uh, but the most uh, interesting this procedure is when we will use, uh, for example, open street data, uh, real life data. Uh, this, this way we can have clusters of this kind of meshes uh, generated almost immediately for any type, of, uh, any, any city in the world. And then with this, this procedure, uh, custom buildings can be recreated. Of course, uh, the, to, to have be, uh, the best results, uh, we will need uh, a lot of different types of facades. And this is uh, not a small task for, for the art team. Uh, but with a couple of dozens of uh, facade types, uh, we can have entire city recreated with very high uh, the level of detail. Uh, and just as with the landscape procedure, this entire procedure can as well be uh, entirely put into Houdini, uh, into uh, Unreal uh, through use of Houdini engine. And now we'll jump to uh, Unreal to see just that. In conclusion, those are just two of many Houdini procedures we are using. Uh, road system generators, uh, small uh, architecture distributors. All of those procedures can be combined uh, to create a large environment. That's then base for our level art team to swoop in and add details and further customize uh, level. I hope you found this uh, talk interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.